Good evening. Uh, my topic for discussion is toric multifocal intraocular lens implantation under the guidance of Dr. Prabhu Vijay Raghavan. You click on the slide. slide. You click on the slide. And then move. Click on the slide. Click on the slide and ah, right. Go ahead now. Modern cataract surgery has become refractive surgery as it aims at giving maximum uncorrected distance and near vision. Monofocal IOL has one sharp focus point for distance, whereas multifocal IOL provides multiple foci, giving good unaided vision across a range of distances. Since there is a prevalence of pre-existing regular corneal astigmatism in patients, the post-operative restoral corneal astigmatism of more than 0.75 diopters will compromise the quality of vision even if multifocal IOL is implanted in cataract surgery. So the main challenge here is making these patients spectacle independent for all ranges of distance, which suits their lifestyle and professional needs. This could be achieved with the help of a toric multifocal intraocular lens. This will correct the pre-existing regular corneal astigmatism ranging from 0.75 to 4.75 diopters in patients undergoing cataract surgery. Presently, the standard toric IOL is available in cylinder powers of 1.5 to 6 diopters. Based on the focality, they can be either bifocal, trifocal or extended depth of focus IOL. Based on the mechanism of action, that can be refractive IOL or diffractive IOL. Nowadays, diffractive IOL is most commonly used. The ideal candidates for toric multifocal IOL are patients with regular corneal astigmatism of 1 to 3 diopters who desire spectacle independence for distance and near. Those who accept some compromise on contrast perception and optical aberrations like halos and glare. And those who does more of near and intermediate work and those who are not an occupational night driver. The contraindications include irregular astigmatism, sonular instability and posterior capsular dehiscence, posterior segment pathologies, poor pupillary dilatation, abnormal pupil size and shape, and prior vitreoretinal procedures, buckling or glaucoma drainage surgeries. So an accurate biometry should be done for IOL power calculation. For this, axial length can be accurately measured with the help of optical systems like IOL Master and LensStar. Abrometry can be measured. Keratometry accurately can be measured with the help of scanning slit topography, sheen flag imaging or OCT based system, which will provide both anterior and posterior curvature of the cornea. The ideal formula for IOL power calculation should consider surgically induced astigmatism, posterior corneal curvature and the effective lens position. Barrett toric calculator, which considers both posterior corneal curvature and the effective lens position gives a better predictability. Uh, nowadays, the manual technique is most commonly used for, uh, may, uh, uh, for marking the toric IOL axis. Other techniques are bubble marker, gravity marker, and newer techniques are iris fingerprinting technique, virion image guided system, and wavefront abrometry. This is very important in case of multifocal toric IOL because a slight misalignment can cause a postoperative residual astigmatism which cannot be tolerated by a patient who have done multifocal intraocular lens implantation. Intraoperatively, we should aim for a central circular 5 mm anterior capsular axis in the back IOL placement. The marks on toric IOL indicate plus cylinder axis and that should be aligned along the steep axis of the cornea. We should recheck the alignment of IOL after the removal of OVD from below and above the IOL and while forming the anterior chamber. Postoperatively, rotational stability should be achieved. If there is more than 10 degree axis misalignment, it will reduce the efficacy of astigmatism correction by 33 percentage, which will, which will cause a visual distortion. So if there is a rotation of more than 10 degree, it should be realigned within two weeks. Then the disadvantages of toric multifocal IOL are reduced light intensity and contrast sensitivity, off axis abrasions and halos and glare. There is no added disadvantage apart from that of multifocal intraocular lens for a toric intra multifocal IOL. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Premvada. Panel? Uh, Dr. Premvada, uh, see, postoperatively, 
if you if you uh, feel that uh, if you if you understand that uh, there is a uh, it's not on access uh, where you have uh, uh, intended to put it uh, yeah. then you can you can unshare your uh, presentation and uh, uh, what uh, what should i be doing That if post-operatively the axis is not aligned, uh, we can again realign the axis within two weeks. Mm, you remark it and uh, uh, see, see there, uh, there are, uh, it's not just, uh, see, there is a remote possibility that it might even be uh, something wrong with the or whatever. And uh, uh, is, there, is there a way in which uh, you remark it and uh, uh, re-rotate it. That, that's fine, but uh, if it if it is not, you're, you're not going to do that. Is there is there any uh, calculation by which you can uh, uh, really get uh, the best results possible? Is there a website where you can uh, go and enter uh, uh, some of the values and then decide on uh, actually where where it should be placed? Depending upon the effective lens position and uh... <laughs> no, not that Sorry. okay, uh, and and uh, uh, one more. Uh, so, uh, what what do you uh, what should what should I should should I be considering all this angle kappa angle alpha and all when when I'm going uh, in for a yes sir IO? yes sir angle kappa is very important in case of multifocal I O L. What is angle kappa? Uh, it is the angle between the pup this uh, visual axis and the pupillary axis or the line of sight. Okay, and it's measured in what? What is the unit of measurement of angle kappa? Mm -hmm. Just the, I mean, you can think about it. <clears throat> is it degrees? Chord mu something is there, sir. The chord, no, no chord mu. Is it degrees or is it microns? I'm not sure, sir. Okay, it's microns because it's measured on the corneal surface. You can't measure angle inside the eye. Microns. So it's microns, okay. And then just so uh, 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 not related to uh, this multifocal. It's like if if it is, you have a, a higher. Uh, greater positive angle uh, kappa, uh, so what would be the uh, look of the patient like? See, in, in, in stabismology terms. If or angle kappa higher, is higher more... Negative. Uh, yeah, tell me. Uh, isotropia can be really? there. Really? You have to really check it. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, uh, but it's just, uh, uh, I mean, but, but uh, you should be teaching us all this. I guess uh, you, you are uh, you're speaking on uh, multifocal IOLs. So, so these are these okay, are so questions okay. that, and uh, is it is it really angle kappa that matters or angle alpha that matters, or do they actually really matter? Yeah, all yeah. those things. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, if if uh, if a student. As a student, I, I ask you, I, I uh, would love to have the answers. So, okay, so that's sir. it, Okay. Thank you, sir. So, Dr. Premada, I wanted to know what, what is your recommended biometry for any K lens, but particularly for premium lenses? What biometry would you recommend? Like Barrett uh, calculator. Bi biometry, not the IOL formula, the biometry. Optometry can be used for axial lens measurement. Okay, so like which, is the, which is the best biometric tool in the current scenario for the last say three four years? IOL master or Lenster? So we have moved on from optical biometry to swept source OCT biometry. So uh, so we've gone from contact biometry to be immersion biometry to optical biometry, and now the latest generation of biometers for the last almost three years are swept or OCT guided biometers. So I thought it's okay. relevant to understand and add because you because you know you're you're taking a very very uh, relevant topic uh, of multifocal IOLs. 
biometry has a very key role to play because your residual depends on your biometry and so okay, you should sir. talk about latest generation okay okay so one more thing is when you do manual marking for toric iols uh yes, can sir. you can you do it in any position sitting down lying down any position um the patient should be sit in sitting position so that it will correct the cyclotorsion okay sitting position correct sitting position and fixating where fixating straight ahead so that there is no convergence because convergence uh, causes and the sir convergence will cause what cyclotorsion will be there in cyclotorsion yes good and so what is last question to you what is the relevance of rexis why is it important to have a 5 mm rexis a 5 mm regular uh, rexis should be there so that the iol will be stable inside the bag it won't get descended if it gets descended there will be a problem with the residual astigmatism and halos and glare okay so you again just a question because surgically we are discussing we are putting the iol in the bag capsular bag so why why yes, will the iol decenter it's in straight in the position it will because it's in the center of the bag why will rexis cause decentration of iol it's not the decentration uh, it is more the tilt of the lens because where you don't yes. have a rexis the iol will tilt and because you said aberrations two times in your presentation tilt will cause coma aberration and uh, then you will have a very horrible patient who will never be corrected with any glasses so it's okay. important to say when you make a rexis 5 mm is not important what is important is 360 degree optic cover to make the lens stable in its place okay okay sir that's all from my side thank you uh, sorry brain but I'll, i'll i'll just ask uh, one more question you have a, a pcr uh, uh, during the surgery uh, and okay, uh, you want to put a multifocal or uh, uh, would you would you Uh, uh really uh, and and it's not really uh, it's, it's a big pcr yeah? so what would be uh, you uh, do you'll uh, put the uh, what will you do your promise the patient uh, multifocal iol and uh, what would you uh, do you have a big pcr yeah? i mean anybody, anybody can have a pcr yeah? sir in case of pcr it's not recommended to put a multifocal iol mm -hmm. because there is a chance of decentration or stability oh, you, won't be there yeah, you have a you have a three piece multifocal uh, with you would you uh, uh, would you go uh, would you still not go ahead with it or uh, or you put Even it in the sulcus and capture it uh, no problem it's okay it's okay uh, so we can optic capture the iol inside the bag if the rend is regular and it's in the center what what does optic capture do with the uh, uh, pcr if the uh, the rexus is uh, uh, small enough and regular enough to allow the capture you can capture it okay okay sir okay okay thank you thank you sir